Hello YouTube. Uh, <clears throat> Hello YouTube. I hope you guys are doing good. Today I'm going to be doing a video on how I like to organize my FL Studio. I want to start off by saying I am not a pro by any means. I've been making uh, music very unprofessionally for three years now. Anyways, uh, I've been using FL Studio for a while and I like to organize it in a very specific way, um, as you can see on screen. So first off, I want you to go into my description where I'm going to have a link of a video that In The Mix did about how they organize theirs, how they use their template, um, much like I have my template right here. Um, if you go ahead, I'll, I'll show a picture on screen of what the template looks like that they did, and then uh, you can uh, look at my screen right here and see that quite a bit of it is different, um, though it is taken from that template. I, uh, you know, went and took that one and customized it how I like it, and um, I want to make a video here where I can tell you how uh, you can uh, customize it the way that you like, uh, much like I have here. He has um, his template uh, for download in the description. That's where I downloaded it. You can download it too, um, assuming that you have FL Studio. So go ahead and do that, and I can show you how you can color and name these side channels here, how you can assign them symbols, um, how you can make time markers up here, and how you can do all of those exact same things for your, for your mixer. So first things first, you can add and subtract channels right here. Um, you know, there's three instrument channels, I have four drum channels, just one bass channel, and then I have a few channels down here. You can go ahead and um, rename and color any one of these channels down here um, to, you know, make any channel that you feel that you'll need. And you can also go ahead and add to these folder channels here by uh, just cloning them. Using the clone down here, I can um, clone it right there, and then I can uh, rename and color it using that. So that's how you add and subtract channels. Secondly, this is how you can color and name channels. If you just right click on any one of these channels, it's very easy. You just press this very top one right here, rename, color, and icon. All three very important things to making sure that your channels are customized the way that you like to customize them. You can name them whatever you want. I've named mine up here instrument A, B, and C. I believe that for his he used one, two, and three, but, but um, I've always resonated with uh, letters a lot more. I'll just uh, go ahead and name this. Um, inst dot guitar you know if I wanted to put a guitar there though I don't typically do that and then you can choose a color by clicking right over here with the color with the with the icon with the color on it and you can choose any color for some people colors might be locked it might just lock you into these colors these more bland colors down here I don't know why they do that because it is so lame but um, what I like to do is you can just press the lock right up here and it unlocks all of the colors and get whatever color you want. Just go ahead and press accept and it'll um, use that for you. You can press the check and then look, it is whatever color you want, it is whatever name you want. On top of that, if you go here, you can choose this little thing on the side, this little symbol on the side. Just left click right there and you can see that you have all of these to choose from. You can use any symbol you want. I can make this a smiley face right here and then I just press check to confirm and it is whatever you like it to be. So that is what that looks like. How I like to do it personally is um, I have the folder right here and then I just make this one a slightly darker color than these ones. That's how I like to do it. You can do it however you want. Um, you can keep them all the same color. You don't. They don't have to be blue. I like them blue. You can do them green, pink, yellow, all of them. I really recommend that you do it on your own and just choose any color that you like. It's very easy to do. So go ahead and do that for yourself after downloading his uh, his link in the in his description. So for my symbols, I chose um, for the instrument bus. I have just a little treble clef right there, as well as a guitar, a piano, and a music note. I don't um, I don't use those symbols to say, hey, this is where I want a guitar. This is where I want a piano. I put whatever I want on these. Um, I just have the little symbols because I think they're cute. I really have no reason other than just I think they're cute. Um, one thing that you might like to do if you don't want to. Um, you know, mislead yourself like that. You can just put them all notes or really, you know, you can just use whatever you want. You want to make a little smiley face, frowny faces, whatever you want. I, I don't use vocal bus a lot, which is why, uh, you know, I just don't even have this highlighted for the template right here. Um, but I just use the, you know, the little mic and then the one and the two. Um, and then I went ahead and added these ones down here, just extra A and extra B, automation A and automation B. You can do that very easily. Just take any one of these tracks Go ahead and right click them, rename it, whatever you want. Whoop, whoop, doop. 
and make it green. I want to press accept and then go right over here, make this the number six. And then I'm going to press uh, check right there to confirm. And you can just make whatever you want. That's what I did with these ones down here. I have uh, extra A and extra B. I abbreviated it. That's just how I like to do it. And then I have automation A and automation B. All right, so that is how you um, can name, color, and assign symbols to any of these uh, channels that you have. Next up, what I want to show you is how you can make time markers. Uh, time markers are really helpful for just organizing sections of your song, um, which I can show you later when I'm making the song. Um, so you click up here, you know, right click and nothing is happening. Nothing is happening at all. Um, you can like select areas, but like it will not do anything until you decide to make one, which you can either do by pressing control T. Oh, I messed up there. Control T. Um, or a lot easier, you can go to this arrow right here in the top left corner. Go ahead and press time markers and press the top one. Just add one and then it'll allow you to name it. Let's name it time marker one press it and then it'll just go right at the at the time so that can just really help you organize sections of your song placing it wherever you want I, I will show you how I do that on my actual songs in a minute all right so all of those things that I just showed you are exactly applicable to the actual mixer if you look at the mixer here I have pretty much the exact same thing going on this is an automatic I went ahead and did the exact same thing that I did here and applied it over here um, you can do pretty much all of that the exact same as I did uh, right over there. Just go ahead and right click on anything, rename, color, and icon. You can do it all the same. I didn't use symbols over here just because I wanted it to look a little less convoluted, um, but I still have, you know, the symbols for the main buses here, 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 and here. One really useful thing that you can do to kind of separate these is um, if you right click and go all the way down here, you can uh, make th something a separator, which separates it to its left. So now this is its own thing. Um, of course, that doesn't actually technically do anything. It just um, it just separates them. So you have to kind of a better idea of what's uh, what's part of one thing and what's part of another thing. So if you want for your template to have these um, little mixer um, filters on, um, you can go ahead and do that. Um, some that I have is the reverb for the bass, which I like to typically use, and um, um, a paramedic for the kick drum, which I also typically use. Um, however, I don't always use them, which is why I just automatically have them uh, switched off. One filter, I say that with quotation marks here, one filter that I have over the master, and I have Fruity Notebook 2. This um, is a little filter that you can apply that just uh, you know lets you make little notes. And so if I just elongate this right here, you can see that I just have this written down along with just a general template of what I would typically put in the notes. Um, of course, I have my name. I have the name of the song, scale and key, BPM, time signature, notes. Flip to next page for lyrics, go to the next page, song name and lyrics. I just like to have that in there just so I can generally know what's going on. Um, with a song if I um, haven't opened it in a bit and I just open it up and I'm like oh yeah what was the what was the you know the genre or like what was I thinking about with the lyrics or like you know all of that is a good spot to like uh, write down your lyrics and all that the next thing I want to show you that's really useful is um, elongating these you can go ahead and take this down here and elongate it look it even shows the little symbol that I made isn't that kind of cute right um, you can just make it as long or short as you want. Oh, what did I just do? The reason I like to make this instrument bus 200% most of the time is because this is a great place to put a automation for your tempo. Having this be a lot longer can make automating my tempo a lot easier. Of course, you can also type in the tempo by right clicking and typing in the value right here. However, just having this elongated makes it a lot easier. Another way to um, elongate the tracks is you can use this little thing right up here. It's so small and so unnoticeable, but if you go ahead and click on it and drag, um, you can just make them all a lot larger. All right, now to get into the actually important part, how I organize my songs. That's how I just like to organize the template. However, how I organize my songs is actually a significantly more important um, part of the process. So let's go ahead and look at a song that I made a few days ago and uh, I'll show you how I do that. All right, so it's already quite easy to see how I used um, the various tips and tricks that I taught you to make an actual song. The exact same way that um, that you can rename and color these sides right here, you can rename and color each of the instruments. Um, right here I just have the right side of the piano and the left side of the piano and, and then I, down here I have drums and the, the hi-hats. Yeah, I'm watching this in post. I stuttered over that sentence so hard, dude. 
<laughs> What's the recommended amount of dedicated wham I should have to serve? And then also I have uh, little markers up here just to show the various parts of the song. So I like to put the little title of the song right there. So the way I like to organize my song um, goes in blocks. I'll have a link in the description for how a lot of Nintendo music uses this trick. I like to use it the exact same way as they do um, in the fact that I have A, B, C, and D. So that was part A and then part B. Part C. And part D. Now if you go ahead and watch the video, he'll teach you about how we can use part A, B, C, and D to make a nice melody, and then how we can um, complement that melody by using A, B, C, and D primed. I went ahead and symbolized prime by using this, um, this little symbol right here, um, just a little asterisk at the end to show that this one is just slightly different. So while this is part D, I have part D prime over here just to make the song a little less repetitive and a little more catchy. I went ahead and changed up just the very end there and I like to organize that by um, using D prime. And so it just uh, flows in a little bit easier, it's a little less repetitive. Here I have C, and then over here I uh, only use the first little part of it, but I have C prime. Just slightly different, but a little different to make it more catchy, and that's how I like to organize that. So I kind of use this A, B, C, D structure across the whole entire song. Not only do I have it on the right piano like I just showed you, but I also have it on the left piano. For the intro, I like to, you know, still split it into A, B, C, and D and just put intro A, intro B, intro C so that I can separate it from A, B, C, and D. In the exact same vein, I have E, F, G, and H for the bridge and then E prime and F prime and do another G and H. So it's already quite easy to see that instead of making just a whole entire song off of one track, separating them into A, B, C, and D can really help organize your song, help you separate different parts of the song. Of course, not everybody works the way that I do, but this is just the way that I like to do it so that maybe you guys can take inspiration and uh, make your workspaces a little more colorful and make your workspaces fun and easy to look at as well as very fun and easy to organize. Just to show off a little more of the song here, I can go into here and show you how all of it is the exact same. I have the same piano instrument where I just named them right and left and I um, routed them to five and six here. And when I did that, I went ahead and took the instrument and um, for the right side, I increased the high mid here and the, uh, decreased the low mid and then did the exact opposite for the left. Um, just to make their parts a little more distinct from each other. All right, and the last thing I wanted to show you is how I use this notebook, the same that I just showed you um, earlier. Now it's quite easy to see how uh, nicely organized it is here. I have my name, I have the name of the song, I show what uh, scale and key it's in, it's in D Dorian, and then I just have a little bit of um, notes about it, though it's not much. Of course I also have no lyrics for the song, so I just type that right there. And for the last organization tip that I wanted to show you guys, if you go into your instruments right here, press this on the left, go ahead and press view, and then go down to scale highlighting. I always 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 use scale highlighting i don't see a lot of people doing it 
I don't see a lot of people doing most of the things that I showed off in this video. It's all kind of just stuff that um, I learned along the way, making all of it the way how I like to make it. I don't expect you guys to do it the same way that I do. However, taking inspiration from watching other people make music is always incredibly useful and incredibly helpful and can really help you learn to make music yourself the way that you like to do it. Um, so on that note, one thing that I love to do is use the scale highlighting. I don't see a lot of people doing it, but I always use it. There is not a single song that I have made where I haven't used it. Do it the way that you like it, and that goes for all of these tips. You can always just do it the way that you like it. If you don't like it this color, go ahead and do a, di a different color. If you don't like them, you know, in a folder, or if you don't like the little symbols that I use, if I, you don't like, you know, the way that I have it organized here or there or uh, everywhere, um, do it the way that you like to do it because the way that you can make your best music is by doing it the way that you like to do it using someone else's process is never going to help you make the music that you resonate with most and other than that there's really not a whole lot more to say that's all my tips and tricks on how i like to organize my fl studio just to recap i showed you the link and where you can find a nice little template to start off with i showed you how to color name and use symbols with the channels and folders on the left I showed you how to do those same things on the instruments, and I showed you how to do those same things on the mixer. I showed you how to use these time markers that separate areas of the song. I showed you how you can separate your piece into uh, different letters, and I showed you the notes that I like to have in the master channel. Um, in the process of making music, it doesn't always warrant time for you to just like stop and organize everything. Almost all the time when I'm making music, it doesn't look like this. I went in, you know, post finish and went ahead and organized it just so that I could show you guys, you know, cool organizing tips and tricks. However, typically I'll just like throw some stuff down. Often, you know, drums won't be put into hats A, B, C, and D. I'll just throw in, I'll just duplicate him. Um, a lot of the time I'll just throw on a, some random color so that I can go ahead and just uh, make music. You know, when you're in the flow and the groove of making music, it doesn't always warrant time for you to just stop and organize everything. Thank you guys for watching. If you like videos like this, go ahead and leave a like and a subscribe. I have all of my music in my channel. I have a link in the description for this piece that I'm showing off now. And that is all. Have a great day.